Good morning, church. Starbucks, for whatever reason, calls this medium, but I'm convinced it's dark. Anyway, today I wanted to take you to Matthew chapter 23, a passage that I find really interesting. Well, you know, I think I say that every morning because I pretty much find the entire Bible interesting, but this passage has something that I think you need to hear and something I definitely need to hear. It says this, Matthew 23, just beginning at the very first verse. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you. Now, this is important. First of all, Jesus is saying, you know all those Pharisees that I have all these problems with? You know the Sadducees, all the chief priests, all those people that I have all these problems with? I'm telling you, you're supposed to do what they say. In other words, Jesus is saying their authority is real, even if their morality is bad. Let's keep going. He says this, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. This is Jesus' point. He says that the leaders of the day have the authority of Moses behind them. And Moses gave true law. Moses gave God's will completely. I mean, it was a real thing. It wasn't just made up. And it wasn't that these people were making up their own authorities. Now, Moses had given real law. And as long as these people are teaching the real law, then they have that real law authority behind them. The problem is they aren't living it out. They're just hypocrites. And so Jesus says, even though you are supposed to pay attention to what they say, because what they say comes from Moses, you should not pay attention to how they live or what they do, because what they do is completely hypocritical. In fact, they speak the words of Moses' law, but they don't help people do them. Now, here's the challenge for people in a position like me. I have the authority to speak God's word. Well, frankly, so do you. Anytime we're speaking God's word to someone, we have the authority of God's word behind us. But Jesus is saying that you yourself and I myself as individual people have the responsibility to make it easier on the people we're bringing God's word to. It's not just about declaring God's word and letting it sit there. We're supposed to declare God's word and then also lift our fingers to help the other people do what God's word asks them to do. It's a big challenge for people in leadership, but it's also a big challenge for every single one of us who claims to understand what God's word says. Let's keep going. Verse 5, Jesus says this, Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the places of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. And they love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. This is Jesus making a reference to something that the Jewish people did. See, in the really, really, really early days of the Jewish law, Back when Moses first gave it, one of the laws was for the people to take the words of God, particularly the words of what was called the Shema in Deuteronomy, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God. That kind of, those words, those kinds of foundational words were supposed to be um, somehow written on pieces of paper and attached to their foreheads. Now, Moses never really said that they should be physically attached to their foreheads. He said the words, bind them on your heart and bind them, bind these words on your heart, bind these words um, on your forehead. The idea, I believe, from Moses is that the words themselves were supposed to be bound onto people, but they took it literally and they would make these things they called phylacteries and they would tie them literally to their forehead with little boxes with little pieces of scripture inside them. And the, the Jewish religious leaders of the day, of Jesus's day, made them big and noticeable and obnoxious. And they would add tassels to their garments because the Old Testament had talked about the priests wearing tassels. And they would make them long and big. And they just made everything over the top because they weren't doing it for God. They were doing it for the people to see. And I got to tell you, leaders today are no different. I got to admit to you, I mean, from one perspective, I justify it. 
I say, I need to live a visibly Christian life because if I'm living a visibly Christian life, then I can motivate other people to possibly live out a Christian life. And I realize that how I live is a visible representation. And so I want people to get a sense that I'm doing the right thing so that they are motivated to do the right thing also. But there's a very fine line between leading people by doing and leading people by pretending to do if their heart isn't really in it. Well, Jesus has just pinpointed the big deal with the Pharisees. And then he says this to his followers. And I want you to hear this. Verse 8. Jesus says, But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he's in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Here is Jesus' statement to his followers. You should not expect You should not ask for, you should not demand recognition of any sort. See, for you, titles, no. Uh, Jesus says, I don't want you to have the title of religious leader, rabbi, teacher, anything. I don't want you to have any religious titles. I don't want you to have the religious title of father or anything else. Jesus says, because you are all brothers and we should add sisters as well. He was talking to his disciples and that's why he only used the masculine word there. But he's saying you are siblings. So don't elevate yourself above above the others. And likewise, Don't elevate other people above you, because here's the deal. You have one teacher, he's the Messiah. You have one father, and he's in heaven. And you don't need titles here on this earth. When I first started in the pastoral ministry, I intentionally didn't want people to call me pastor. And so I introduced myself to everybody as Jeff. I'm technically a reverend. I I do have a ordination document. And uh, technically, because I have an ordination document, then my official title is reverend. But I never use it. The only people who ever send me mail with REV at the beginning of my name are my parents. Uh, Sometimes my dad when he sends something to me. But I don't use the title ever. And reverend is a title that means a person who is revered. Uh, revered one. That's kind of what it means. Anyway, I don't like that title. I didn't like the title pastor. And then while I was in Chicago, I remember someone telling me that we live in a society that doesn't do honor at all. And since we don't do honor well at all, we should be willing to teach people how to show honor to people when honor is due. And so I reluctantly accepted the title pastor. And now I kind of still go with it. I, I prefer for people to call me Pastor Jeff instead of just Jeff. I prefer for people to call me, especially for kids, to call me a mister or a pastor, something with a title, as opposed to just my name. I mean, I I like the titles better. It makes me feel better about myself. And when I justify it, it makes me feel like the other person is learning how to show respect properly. It's the way people in the South use the word sir for any time they're talking to a guy or ma'am any time they're talking to a woman. I like titles. I think they help us develop a better society. But here's the danger. Jesus says, if you begin to think of yourself as the rabbi, or if other people begin to think of you as the rabbi, then you immediately enter into dangerous territory because once you start thinking of yourself as the teacher, and when other people start thinking of you as the teacher, then you become your own authority. And when you become your own authority and when you begin to view yourself as someone super important, then you begin to lose the absolute core of what it means to be a Jesus follower at all. Remember, he said in verse 11, the greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. 
See, the Jesus life is all about service. The Jesus life is all about humility. The Jesus life is all about lifting other people up. And when you begin to view yourself too highly, everything begins to crumble. Friends, this is an important lesson for those of us who claim to be leaders, but it's an important lesson for all of us. I don't want to teach you that you should be the kind of person that just completely gets rid of all uh, titles, uh, completely ignores all authority. I, I want you to be a person who recognizes the importance of titles and authority and showing respect to other people. Respect is a good thing. But, oh, I want you to be people of humility first. Internally and humility in the way you relate to others. I don't think the thing we need to get ourselves worried about is whether or not we accidentally use a term of honor. But the thing we definitely need to worry about is whether or not we feel too much of the honor in ourselves, whether we get upset when other people fail to show us proper respect, or whether or not we are making the Christian life easy or difficult for the people we are helping, for the people we are ministering to. Listen, I wanna encourage you to be people who put Jesus first, and I wanna encourage you to be people who live lives of humility. Let me pray for you today. God, we ask that you would just guide this time that we spend today in whatever endeavors we're doing. Help us to be people who honor you no matter what, who see you as most important, and see our position in your kingdom as just the positions of servants. Lord, allow us and encourage us and strengthen us and help us to be humble so that any recognition we get from you will be recognition well-deserved. Lord, just go with us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, live a life of humility and respect as much as it's up to you. God bless you.